Welcome to AZ Medical Videos. Please take your time to click the like button below, subscribe to our channel, or post questions and comments. And yes, I do write funny. Today's topic is on vitamin D, so let's begin here by drawing a bone. Why? Because mama wasn't lying when she told you vitamin D was good for your bones. So we can break down our bones into two different categories. An organic portion, which is made up of collagen, and an inorganic portion, which contains hydroxyapatite, which is itself is made of calcium and phosphate. This hydroxyapatite component is actually a hot topic in medicine right now, as scientists and doctors have made a new compound called biocement that can be injected into damaged areas and promote healing. Anywho, vitamin D stimulates the presence of this hydroxyapatite or calcium and phosphate. Therefore, vitamin D is major in remodeling of our bone by breaking down the old and forming the new. Now let's see how all this works. I'll begin by drawing the sun. Can anyone guess why? Correct, it is the major source of our vitamin D along with our diet. So the UV rays from the sun shine down on our skin and something happens. A component on our skin, 7-hydroxycholesterol, gets converted to vitamin D3 cholecalciferol, an inactivated form of vitamin D. This cholecalciferol gets transported to the liver where it is converted to 25-hydroxycholecalciferol, also known as calcidiol, the storage form of vitamin D in our body. This hormone is what is tested when checking your vitamin D levels in the body. When it needs to be used, the 25-HCC is transported to the kidneys where 1-alpha-hydroxylase activates it to form 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol, also known as calcitriol. This guy is the playmaker. 125-DHCC has three main ways to increase calcium and phosphate levels. Let's start with the kidney itself. 125 DHCC stimulates renal absorption of calcium and phosphate at the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron. Next, possibly the number one job of this active vitamin D is the stimulation of the synthesis of calbindin in the, D, in the GI tract. This protein increases calcium and phosphate absorption as well. And finally, vitamin D acts on the bones by stimulating osteoclast activity. But you're thinking, what? But osteoclasts break down bone. Well, when these osteoclasts break down bone, what is released? Calcium and phosphate. Now that calcium and phosphate levels are high, they can be used for building new bone via osteoblasts. Think B for build. So what do we call this breakdown and formation? Bone remodeling. Also, the thyroid and parathyroid are big contributors in this process of calcium regulation. But instead of going into detail, just know that the thyroid decreases blood calcium via calcitonin, and the parathyroid releases parathyroid hormone, which increases calcium levels. Okay, so a quick recap. The UV rays hit our skin. We turn 7-hydroxycholesterol into cholecalciferol, goes to the liver, is converted to our storage form, which goes to the kidney to become the activated form. This works on our nephron and gut to absorb calcium and phosphate, and then on our bone to perform the bone remodeling process. So what if someone is experiencing a vitamin D deficiency? This is actually a big issue in developing countries due to poor dietary intake and also a problem in the United States as about 100 million Americans fail to get enough sunlight. What does that tell you all that are sitting indoors watching this video? It is also important to note that those with liver and kidney failure are susceptible to vitamin D deficiencies as well. If a child is chronically deficient in vitamin D, they can develop something called rickets, which involves multiple deformities such as genu varum or bow legs, genu valgum, also known as knock knees or pigeon toed, 
or frontal bossing of the forehead. Or these knobby beaded like appearances on the costochondral junctions of the rib cage called rickety rosary, which can be seen on an x ray or, if severe enough, by the naked eye. Luckily, these symptoms are all reversible with supplementation of calcium and vitamin D. Isn't it weird that these bones of the children bend? Why don't they just break? Well, although these bones are lacking calcium and phosphate, they still contain high amounts of our organic portion of bone, the collagen, which is the main component of our bone's periosteum. Osteomalacia is a term describing vitamin D deficiency in adults. There aren't really any visual disturbances due to the fact that the growth plates have already fused. However, bone demineralization still takes place leading to bone pain, an increased occurrence of fractures, and a duck-like gait. Osteomalacia can also be reversed with supplementation. Aside from being deficient in vitamin D, there are no real threats to an overdose or toxicity. Vitamin D is the only fat-soluble vitamin that can be broken down by bile. Therefore, in cases of increased vitamin D, it is very rare toxicity will occur unless there is an underlying liver or kidney problem. Bone remodeling is only one of the many benefits linked to adequate vitamin D. So it's suggested that you supply your body with a sufficient amount. Thank you for watching.